Here's the thing. I blame myself because I'm always using the overshoot behavior. You guys see me use it all the time. But the fact of the matter is there's other behaviors in Apple Motion that deserve some love too. So today I'm going to show you five behaviors that are kind of the unsung heroes of Apple Motion and how I would use them in real projects, either on their own or in conjunction with other behaviors. Let's dive right into it. We're starting with the clamp behavior. So let's start with this animating text I created using the overshoot behavior. Yeah, I know the overshoot behavior, but that's not what this video is about. I've got the overshoot applied to the rotation on the Z axis on this text. And I'll show you that I have the anchor point set to the bottom left corner of the text. And by the way, guys, if you want access to these working projects on motion, join my Patreon community. Everybody in my Patreon gets access to all of my motion files from all time. So check that out. All right, let's keep going. Let me show you what's really going on with this animation. I'm going to use my ruler tools and I'm going to bring the ruler to the very bottom of the text. And you can see that with the overshoot, the text bounces below that yellow line. Now let's apply the clamp behavior. I'm going to go up to behaviors. We're going to go to parameter and we're going to go to clamp. And in the inspector window under behaviors on the apply to line, we're going to set it to rotation. And then I'm going to switch the clamp at to minimum and now see what's happened here. The clamp behavior has restricted the rotation of my text to land just at that yellow line. That is what the clamp behavior does. It gives you a little bit of extra control when you're using other behaviors. All right, let's move on to my next favorite unsung behavior, which is link. For my link project so far, all I have is this text here. It's not doing anything. It's not moving. It just says, let's use the link. I'm going to draw a line under this text and I'm going to reduce the width of this guy. And now what I want to have happen is for this line to expand and get longer as I add more text to this project. So it really gives me like an underline effect on my text because motion does not have underlining like let's say Microsoft Word does. So what I'm going to do is head on up to behaviors under parameter. We're going to go to link and you're going to see this source object well here. I'm going to drag from my project pane the text element into that well. And under target parameters, I'm going to go to properties, transform, scale, and X. And under source parameter, I'm going to go to object attributes, size, and width. And by default, the link behavior is not enabled, so we need to manually enable it here. And now when I add more text to my project, the line goes right along with it. So now you could publish this to Final Cut and have an underlined text title template. All right, let's move on to our next behavior, which is negate. So this is what we're starting with. It is text with an overshoot behavior applied to the shear of the text. So we're getting this fun diagonal bounce. This is how I would use the negate behavior. I'm going to duplicate that original text under appearance. I'm going to make it a dark gray. I'm going to apply some filters to this. Let's add a blur and let's also apply the flop behavior, which you can find under distortion. And we're going to flop this vertically. And I'm just going to play with the position of this. So it's just barely touching my original text. All right, now we're going to reach for the link behavior again before we reach for the negate behavior. A lot of times these behaviors need to work in conjunction with each other. So I'm going to select that text in my project pane, head on over to behaviors, go to parameter and then link. In the well, of course, I'm going to drop my original text under target parameters. We're going to go to properties, transform and shear and under compatible parameters, we're actually going to make it the exact same thing. And this is probably a good time to stop and remind you that if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. And I'm actually going to crank up that blur a bit. So it really gives us that shadow look. But now when I play it back, you can see that the shadow doesn't look quite right. It's sort of going in the opposite way I needed to. That's where the negate behavior comes in. Let's head on up to behaviors. Let's go back to parameter. We're going to find negate and we're going to apply this to that shear. And that is how you use the negate behavior. The next behavior I think you need to know about is gravity. So to use the gravity behavior, I'm actually going to start with an emitter. So I'm starting with this snowflake image and I'm going to scale it way down and I'm going to hit the make particles button here to make it an emitter. And I'm going to change the shape from point to line and I'm going to change the start and end points here. 
And so now that I've got my emitter set up, let's play it back so you can see how it works. The snowflakes are generating from the center line and floating upward and downward. Now let's apply the gravity behavior to get these snowflakes to actually fall from the sky. So head on over to behaviors. You're going to go to simulations and select gravity. And now you can see that the snowflakes are actually trending downward. We can make some adjustments here with the acceleration. And if we really want to get realistic with this, we can play with the scale randomness, increase the life, increase the speed of our emitter. And now we have falling snowflakes. So that is our snowfall effect. But I do have another behavior that I want to give an honorable mention here. It's not something I reach for a lot, but I do think it's fun. If we head on up to behaviors, simulation, and edge collision, our snowflakes actually bounce around the frame. I haven't really found a practical way to use this effect yet. If you have used it in a way that's like in a context and not just because it's fun looking, link to it down below. I'm dying to see it. All right, let's move on to the next behavior I can't wait to show you, which is the audio behavior. It's really cool because it links your animation in your motion project to a sound. And it's something I've only talked about like one other time on my channel. Let's get into it. We're gonna start with this pink heart shape. And I also have an audio track of a heart beating here in motion. Let's select that pink heart, head on over to behaviors, parameter, audio, and we've got the source audio well here. I'm going to select two and the heartbeat sound effect that you can find under the media tab in my project pane. And under the apply to line, let's go to properties, transform, scale, and all. And now the scale of the heart is animating in line with that sound effect. And what's cool is that I can apply multiple audio behaviors to different parts of our shape. So I'm going to duplicate this audio behavior. And under the apply to, let's apply it to the outline width, and then let's crank up that scale a little bit. And so now not only is that heart getting bigger, but the outline is getting thicker too. So I hope this video inspired you to step out of your overshoot box a little bit and try some other behaviors in motion, especially combining two behaviors to get a really custom look. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love, and I'll see you again.